And I'm like, where's the cabin? She looks at her phone again and goes, it took us the wrong way. And I'm like, so where are we right now? It turns out we were on someone else's property. If you made a hand grenade, uh -huh. that instead of shrapnel was just scrambled, scrambled eggs. <laughs> There's probably like a one, of, one in five chance of that happening to every tent at yes, Coachella. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that was just me on a different timeline. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, Mel and I had a crazy, a crazy trip to Yosemite. Oh, you um, went to Yosemite? Yeah, we went to Yosemite. I thought, I thought maybe it was week. big. Oh, that's, yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. this is, this is big mountain, you know? Um, and I, I've been to Yosemite once and I was just like a kid with my parents, but I don't remember much about it. But yeah, we, we were going with a group or not a group. It was just another couple that was going to meet us there a day after we checked in. Yep. So we got an Airbnb and, uh. We roll up. They're like, oh, check-ins after 4, anytime after 4. We show up around 8 p.m. So we get there a little late. It's dark. And it's there's way more snow up there than we imagined. We thought there'd be, like, little patches. Mm -hmm. It is, like, blizzarding. There's, like, we're seeing cars drive down. Did you happen to look coming. at the weather before you went? We did. We did. Okay. Um, and uh, it did say it was snowing. But I don't know why, for some reason, we just had it in our, made up in our minds that it wasn't going to be, like, a ton of snow. So as we're driving up the mountain... We're like towards Oak Oakhurst. We see cars coming down that have like literally three feet of snow on on the roof. Oh, and we're like, oh my god! Like, and we were dri driving her car, her Honda, which is two wheel drive, but we did have chains. Okay, and so in in advance, yeah, in advance. Okay, yeah. So we came prepared, right? We were prepared for snowy conditions yeah. that way. Uh, we get to the Airbnb, but it's just a private road. It's like a private access road that leads to the cabin. Uh, and it's it's a it's a shared road with like other cabins, There's like five or six cabins or whatever. Mm -hmm. We pull up to it and it's just covered in snow. It hasn't been plowed. It's covered in like at least a foot and a half of snow. And like in a Forerunner, if you're like in a you know a Jeep Wrangler, you're fine. But in yeah. her car, even with chains, like I tried it and it just we, we got stuck. The it, the snow just, level was up to her license plate, more or less. The front jams. license plate. It just jams. Just jams. Into the snow. And I was like, if I keep forcing it, we will get stuck. Yeah. So I was like. F that noise back up and, uh, and, and you can't even see how long this road is. Her headlights are pointed straight, straight at it. Yeah. And it's just a black abyss. So we don't know how, how far, far down it goes, but the navigation says it's not like super close. And it's a big road. So we call the, uh, the host, the Airbnb, the Airbnb host is this Vacasa. I'll shout them out. Screw you guys. It's just a giant corporation that's just bought oh. thousands of properties and just sells them out on, um, rents them out on Airbnb. Yeah. So the quality is just shit. And so I get a customer service agent on the phone and I tell her a situation. We can't even access the cabin. And she goes, well, uh, I think what you need to do is find the shovel. And I'm like, there's no way we can do that. There's no way we can do it because the road is huge. It would take us till morning, the two of us shoveling. We don't even know how long this road goes. Yeah, that's an optimistic <laughs> estimate. It's insane. <laughs> I, said, I said, if you saw, if you were looking at the road that I'm seeing right now, you would laugh at that suggestion it's preposterous there's no way and, and also this is a private road it's not our responsibility that we can't access your property it should yeah. have been plowed and she's like well you know the instruction and she, she immediately tried to flip it on us i was getting she was like oh well you, you know the, the owner said that you should prepare for snowy conditions i was like we have chains we put chains on and we still can't make it up like you it's not our job to maintain your property so that it's accessible right and she's and then she goes well uh, it does. I think there's a note here that says that they did plow it today at 4 p.m., which was the, the listed check-in time. And I go, okay, but they told us check-in time was any time 4 p.m. or later. They didn't say check-in at around 4 p.m., otherwise the snow will just pile up again. That's yeah. totally different. And you would have been stuck. We would have been stuck. Yeah, exactly. We would have been stuck in as opposed to stuck out. I'm assuming you brought a lot of supplies, but still. Exactly. So um, at any rate, she's like, well... I was getting, I was livid. I was a lot more aggressive than I'm being now. And she finally caught on. She's like, she kind of backed off a little bit. She's like, let me make some calls, see what I can do. She calls back 10 minutes later and goes, all the plows are closed right now. All the plow, you know, companies, the city's closed. Everything's closed. The soonest they could probably plow is tomorrow morning. And I go, so what do we do? We're just, should we just get a hotel for the night? And she's like, well, there is the shovel. I'm like, we're not getting the shovel. <laughs> the fact she suggested it like three times. I was like, you're insane. This is crazy. So I was like, you know what? Thanks for your help. Hang up. We, we immediately start looking up, you know, nearby hotels. And fortunately, we were close to, we were in Fish Camp. That was where the Airbnb was, which is really close to Oakhurst, which is a bigger city. 
So there was a bunch of hotels. We we found a, a holiday holiday inn, and we get in, we just ch- book you know this this holiday inn. We walk in. The lady's like, she can t- tell we're just like tired. She's like, oh reservation? Like we're walk ins. And she goes, oh. And at first we're like looking at each other like if they don't have a freaking room for us right now, and because uh, all the other hotels around look a little seedy. The Holiday Inn is like, oh, there's a trusted name. And there's like, they have yeah. amenities. We just wanted something with amenities. And uh, and she's like, okay, we do have a room, but it's two two queen beds. Fine. Perfect. And uh, we just stayed up all night playing battle shots till like four in the morning. We were just like <laughs> taking shots. Like we were just like ready to just, you know, let loose. And then the next morning we get a call from Airbnb or from Vacasa, the host. And they're like, yep, we plowed it at, you know, 10, 10 a.m. this morning. And uh, we were checking out of the hotel at that point, and we're like, "Okay, that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, can we confirm that you guys can plow it again later when the rest of our group shows up? Because they weren't they were coming from our friends were coming from San Francisco. They were getting there till like seven p.m. that night. Yeah. So I was like, if if not, then the same thing's just going to happen. What what happened to us last night will happen to them tonight. And Cause, I go because snow is still coming. Yes, down. snow is still coming down. And I was like, there's no point in us checking in at all if half of our group can't access the cabin. And they lagged on, they never got back to us with an answer. Mm-hmm. And we needed to update our friends, like, what's the deal? Because they're driving, they, they need to plan in advance. They're coming a long way. So no answer. So we call Airbnb at this point and go, just cancel it. Cancel the whole thing. We want a refund for, we, we haven't even checked into the place. So we want a refund. We want to be, be reimbursed for the $300 hotel that yeah. we just booked. And so that was an ongoing thing. Mel and I were on the phone with them for a while. They're like, yeah, we'll, co- we'll contact. Airbnb was pretty chill for the most part. They're like, yeah, we'll talk to the host and see if we can sort it out. Long story short, they did uh, get, give us refund and everything um, and reimbursement. But the story doesn't end there. So at this point, Mel and I are scrambling on our phones. We're, we're in the Holiday Inn parking lot in our, mm-hmm. in our car, in her car. You had already it's, checked out. Already checked out. There's snow just falling everywhere. And we're on our phones. Sorry. We're on our phones looking for another Airbnb. We find one that looks pretty decent. I'm like, all right, this one's pretty cool. It's available. We're contacting the guy. Uh, we're talking to him, texting him. And so, yeah, sure. Uh, we can come right now. We're like, sweet. So it's probably 30 minute drive, 45 minute drive. We haul over there. And this, this is, uh, this location is in Yosemite park. So we actually like pay the $35 parking for the week. We get into the national park. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it was actually a better look. It was cooler, more central location. And we're like driving around. This is cool. And then we get to this cul-de-sac. We're using Apple Maps, uh, Mel's phone, to navigate us. And it takes us to this cul-de-sac. And at the cul-de-sac, which is paved, it's a nice paved road. At the end of the cul-de-sac, there's an, another road that just goes off in the distance somewhere. We can't really see where it, where it leads, but it's all snow. And... Apple Maps is telling us to go down this road. And we just look at each other. We're like, well, I mean, the app says it's down here. So we put up, <laughs> we, we get out of the car and put on chains. <laughs> we start going down this road slowly, five miles an hour. And, uh, and, and there's like a lady that, that lives like on the corner. That's just like an old lady. There's no one there. It's a ghost town. There's just one lady outside for some reason all like bundled up with a hood. She's got gray hair. She looks a little and raggedy she's just watching you. And she's just watching us like put the chains on. And I kept looking at her like, is she going to say something to us? Or like, why is she keep, she's just like, just looking at us the whole time. And then she just watches us go down this snow path. She, she was like an NPC. She was just like, it was like just some crazy lady. Right. And I'm like, whatever. You didn't so, interact with her. No, she, I was waiting for her. I was ready for her to say something to us, but she never did. Right. We'll circle back to that. So we're driving down this path. We get down maybe, you know, until the lady's out of sight practically. And we're like, okay. And then stuck. The car just stops moving. Uh Where our tires are completely dug in. I try reversing. I try rocking the car, you know, back and forth, forward, reverse, forward. Nothing. We're stuck. And at this point, this road has gotten so narrow. And there's two walls of snow on either side of us. Sorry. I can't even get out of my car. Or I can't even get out to the driver's side. The door doesn't open. We're so compacted in. We, I had to climb out through Mel's side, passenger side, and uh, and she could barely open her door. Like it, we were close to having to escape through the moonroof if we had to. And it's like kind of snowing lightly, and we're like, "Oh my god!" Like this is what is happening right now. And and Mel goes, "Well, the app says the cabin's just around this corner. If we just keep walking down, then maybe we can get a shovel from inside because this this road was a bit more manageable to shovel. Yeah, it still sucked, but more manageable than the last one." 
fine. So we just get on foot, just leave her car behind and start walking down, the, down, down this path. And it just terminates. There's like a couple vehicles parked somewhere, maybe a storage shed. And it just looks like someone's property. And we're looking around. We don't see, but we don't see a cabin. And I'm like, where's the cabin? She looks at her phone again and goes, it took us the wrong way. And I'm like, so where are we right now? It turns out we were on someone else's property. We were on a private road, some, some random road. So I'm, we're like, what do we do right now? We have no cell phone service either. There's zero cell phone service. <laughs> we can't even call AAA or anything. So I get back in the car and I'm trying to reverse again, just another attempt mm-hmm. while Mel is like outside. She's standing in front of the car and then she, uh, she starts saying something, almost like yelling, at, yelling at me. I'm like trying to read. I'm like, what? Turns out she's actually yelling at the lady, the old lady way back there. It's like incoherent. <laughs> right. So I'm like, oh, like maybe she knows what's going. Maybe she has a phone we could use. So we walk to this lady. She's just standing on, on her yard. And it's there's snow everywhere. It's just like a winter wonderland. There's a giant mount, mountain of snow, unplowed snow, that's in between her and us. So we're kind of like talking maybe 30 feet away. So we're kind of raising our voices. Hey. And she goes, you guys are on, you guys are on Greg's yard. You got, you guys went to Greg's. Why'd you go down Greg's road? And we're like, we our our app to- took us this way. We thought we were going to our Airbnb. And she goes, oh, was that so-and-so? She names the name of the, the Airbnb host, which is also another company. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, I think that's it. And she goes, oh, you should call them. They're, they're pretty helpful. And like, you know, she's nice, but kind of quirky. And so I, I we call them up. We, at this point, we had cell phone service once we walked back. Okay. And I put it on speakerphone. She's like, put it on speakerphone. I want to talk. And then, like, the guy's like, hey, this is Bill. I was like, I tell him the situation. I'm like, yeah. And then she's like, oh, I want to talk to him. The lady wants to talk to him, right? And I go, there's a – and then and then he could hear in the background. He goes, is there an old lady there with you? Does she have, like, gray hair? And at this point, I'm, I'm – I'm, I'm thinking he's going to say, she's a psycho bitch. Run now. Run now. <laughs> she's got knives. Um, but and she, it's on speakerphone too, so she can hear what he's saying. So I'm just like, oh God, I hope the next thing that comes out of his mouth isn't awkward. I'm like, yep, she's right here. You're on speakerphone. <laughs> and he's like, and then she goes, and he goes, oh, hi, Lori. And she's like, hi, Bill. And they, they start, <laughs> I'm just literally holding my phone up so that they can have a conversation. These two people can have a conversation. It's just like old honky tonk, like small town old people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He went on, they went on Greg's yard, but Greg's not home. It's just like, what is happening right now? And then uh, he's like, it's okay. We'll send a, we'll send a vehicle out there to help you guys. We got to plow. We'll be there in 10 minutes. So two guys show up. It's like two young, like Hispanic dudes, super chill. And they're just like, uh. Guy rolls his window down and he's like, you look familiar. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> and I don't, I don't even say anything. I'm just like, I just, look, I'm like, okay, if you can figure it out, you can figure it out. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hand this to you. Yeah. And he's like, do you do YouTube? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, dude, I built my computer from you. I watched your videos. Like you helped me build. I'm like, sweet. So that, that, it, that was actually kind of cool because it sort of relieved a lot of the tension that we were feeling. Yeah. It's just like, oh, okay. There's like this level of weird trust that you somehow immediately have yeah. for the person. So they were super friendly and turned out they didn't even need to plow anything. They just, it was two guys that just pushed the car while I reversed. Yeah. Uh, they pushed the front of the enough. car. Yep, and then with once I got some momentum, I just backed it all the way out. But it was like backing out like a quarter mile. I'm like with this little narrow road. I'm like, I hope I don't turn it and almost ran into a wall, uh, a wall of snow. We eventually back out. I'm like, thank you guys. And then we uh, we we were able to get to our. Air- Turns out our Airbnb was only less than a block away. We had passed it by less than a block. Oh, so wow. yeah, so we had just missed it. And then and also. The, the guy who lived on that property that we trespassed on, mm-hmm. uh, A, he wasn't home. B, the lady, did, she, she said, oh, I thought you guys looked like you knew what you were doing or where you were going, so I didn't think to say anything or stop you. Also, there's a, 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 a gate that closes that road that the guy left open. So we just, otherwise that would have turned us off. Kind of a perfect storm. And there was a no trespassing sign that had fallen over right next to that gate. So it was everything, <laughs> yeah, perfect storm. That led us to get stranded there. We were stranded there for maybe like an hour or something like that. Felt like an eternity. So did, did your friends make it okay? They made it okay. They were fine. They rented a Jeep. They had <laughs> they had traction. There was like no snow by the time they were rolling in. It was just like just like, oh yeah, we just we just drove. They took a bit of a detour uh, to avoid some snowy conditions, but yeah, they were fine. <laughs> they were totally fine. But it was just like one thing after another. At one point, Mel and I just looked at each other like this feels like a movie. This feels like we're in a simulation. Someone's messing with us right now. It was just, 
it was pretty pretty cinematic. Looking back on it, it was it was very fun. It was kind of fun. That's quite the tale. Yeah. Yeah. But once once all that trial and tribulation was over. Normal trip after that. Yeah, it's like, oh look at that fucking waterfall. It was just yeah. so <laughs> it's funny because that was like actually the most exciting and adventurous part of the whole trip was just everything going disastrously disastrous, just catastrophically wrong. Um so how, I guess how was the holiday inn? The holiday inn was so nice. Just the fact that it was a place that we could stay and yeah. had beds. Like we because, I mean, the, uh, you have to bear in mind, like, this Airbnb, the first one that we tried going to, it was on a snow road, snow-covered road. There was not a soul in sight. It was dark, pitch black, darker than this neighborhood. Not a single light. The only light we had was maybe a bit from the moon and the headlights of the car. And it's snowing. And it's just, like, wilderness. It's in the woods. It's not, like, a driveway. It's not a neighborhood. It's just in the—we're just in the snow. And we're, like, uh, alone barely any service and so once we got into the holiday and it was just like oh like it was like reaching a checkpoint in a, in a horror game <laughs> it's like oh click save click save um it was nice it was I, really nice i feel like uh i've gotten i've gotten to the point where i'm if i'm traveling if i want to go if i want to go do something there's a chance that i'll try to just find a, a hotel yeah instead of an airbnb yeah because Airbnb is so fraught with with inconsistency yes. and problems. It's very unpredictable. And hotels make like consistency and reliability is their bread and butter. Yes, absolutely. 100%, especially if it's like uh if I'm traveling overseas and like English isn't the first language, it's really nice to have concierge to like help you out with yeah. translations or booking stuff, anything, directions. Um like in like in Taiwan, I remember one time I rolled the dice on an Airbnb of a Taiwanese apartment. Yeah, and uh, it was pretty chill, except there were mosquitoes everywhere in the apartment. And so every morning I'd wake up with like six new bites. Did they have it, uh, it was screens on the windows? Um, it was weird. It was like there weren't even really. There were some windows, but we we kept them completely closed the whole time. It was just AC cranked the whole time, and but mosquitoes were still somehow coming in through the probably through the drainage, mm. probably through the drainage oh. or something. And it was bad. It was like real bad. Yeah, like, I hate mosquitoes. Yeah, dude, they're the worst. I hate bugs as it is. Ones that suck my blood are just <laughs> <laughs> that's insult to injury. And they're freeloaders, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I've been lucky with a lot of my travel. I haven't really had any memor- major memorable disasters. But one time in Hawaii, I was traveling with my family. We got this really nice condo uh, rental. Uh, it was before Airbnb. So, but it was, it was kind of similar in that it's like some company or some person owns it that rents it out. So I don't know how. So you're like a little kid. Yeah. Yeah. Dumb as hell. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And I, I, we got some food. I was putting it in the fridge. I was like, man, this fridge is not very cold. I'm going to turn, turn the coldness up a little bit. (laughs) And I keep the food fresh. Turn the heat on? No. No, I made the fridge too cold. You just froze everything? Well, ha- apparently, uh, uh, this is a thing that happens, especially in, I guess, I guess Hawaii, or maybe even just very humid places. But if you, or maybe it was the type of fridge, I don't know. But apparently, if you turn the temperature too low, uh, fridge and or freezer, I forget, it causes the water line uh, that feeds like the ice machine and everything yeah. to freeze. Oh, and potentially burst. burst. Oh God! So uh, my sister was not feeling well, so we had all my parents and I gone to the beach or something, and then left her there. Yeah, yeah. We come back, and there's like this whole scene <laughs> because while we were gone, the fridge had started just pouring water out, yeah. like because of the burst water line. <laughs> And your sister was probably a kid too. Like Yeah, she's young. a few years older than me, but she was she was like doing an admirable job of like like I think I think she figured out to call like one of the people who runs the property or something or she yeah. went out and got like she she, she did it. a good job. She yeah. handled it. Yeah. Nice. So by the time we got back, they had already like turned off the water and they were starting to clean up, I think. <laughs> and 
She was very upset. She didn't want to have to deal with all that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But she did especially a good job if she's sick it. too. Damn. Yeah, that sucks. But how how quickly were you outed? Uh, well, we packed up, and they were like, uh, the company that we had rented from, where they were like, oh, well, we have another place. We'll show you. Um, damn, it was that bad. You had to move. Well, they have to do like they have to fix it. Yeah, they yeah. have to get fans in there and yeah. dry stuff out and everything. Damn. And so we go to this this new spot and I thought it was I thought it was okay, but I have low standards. Mm-hmm. But my parents were looking at it like mm-hmm. <laughs> the it new was, spot was, wasn't as nice. The, yeah, the the first place we had gone to was was really nice, sure. like pretty pretty close to brand new. Yeah. And uh then the second place we went to was like kind of kind of like old like yeah a bit more lived in didn't didn't it needed a renovation right. it was very it was a little bit dingy yeah and a little like mildewy musty yeah. and a couple and, frozen pipes in there and i i, I was i would have put up with it but my parents were like no we want a nice place for our vacation yeah for sure and, and so, they paid for it too yeah that makes sense yeah so somehow <laughs> somehow they were able to go, this is not going to cut it. Yeah. We need we need something better. Yeah. We ended up right back where we started, like... The same uh, spot? Uh, like three three or four houses down the street or yeah. condos, whatever, back in the same place. Don't and tell me. It was, it was like the same thing. It was like the same model oh, and okay. everything. I thought you were going to say you turned the, the fridge cold again no <laughs> no 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 we, we we went back to where the, we, we had started but yeah. just a different a different condo in yeah. that same like right a couple units down yeah yeah and it was almost identical nice i didn't screw with the fridge that time. <laughs> so no one ever found out it was you i uh, know i don't think so. no way do you think so some... i i i bet i bet my my parents suspected really but i don't think because it was a vacation i don't think they ever like asked me outright if i had anything to do with it did you know right away like this was my doing uh or did it once, take you a once while? they were talking about oh yeah the fridge is leaking um actually no it was on a the, the next time the, when, the next time i went to hawaii they specifically warned oh don't mess with the temperature controls on the fridge <laughs> one year we had this dumbass <laughs> and that's <laughs> that's this when i knew fun. that's when i knew for sure it was my fault <laughs> That's so funny. Because I was like, okay, that explains what happened. I had suspected. Wow. But that that made me sure. Um, they should really put like a limiter on that or like a something. Like they should be required to have like a sign or something. That's that's a big, it's an easy mistake to make if you don't know I that. I think, I think, yeah, no, I I bet they do now. Like, For sure, like, yeah. For the rentals, yeah. 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 Um, And that same trip, uh, bonus content. <laughs> Again, features. Again, I am. I was. Uh, in general, I am a stupid person, and I do stupid things. And I was a child, or teenager, so you know that's an extra. That's extra two levels up on the, the normal, yeah, right. the normal stupid thing. <laughs> so I had this great idea. I was like, I'm hungry. Ah, here's an egg. I will microwave this egg. And it will cook inside of the shell perfectly. <laughs> what even happens? I don't even know. Explode? Yeah. <laughs> just all up in the microwave. Just well, yeah. So so what happens is eventually uh, you heat something with water in it enough, and it starts to form steam. Ah, right? uh, yeah. If you have an eggshell, can't escape. It can't. I, uh, I apparently some people poke it or some. Nah, I don't think that's a good idea. But basically, yeah. it just built the egg built up pressure right until it exploded. And the <laughs> great part was, it was like if you made a hand grenade uh-huh. that instead of shrapnel was just scrambled, scrambled eggs. eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> and you know how some some microwaves latch closed, yeah. And you you press a little button that releases the latch, right? Some microwaves have a handle that, and you just close it, yeah. and then you grab the handle and pull it, and it opens just with pressure. Right. right. This was the latter. So when the egg went off, oh no, it blew the microwave open. Oh my god! <laughs> so not only was the inside of the microwave coated with an egg, yeah, uh, but it also spewed out <laughs> because it blew the door open, 
<laughs> this is at the is this at the new place or the old first place? Uh, the second, the, se- the second place. <laughs> You're just destroying all the appliances. It didn't damage the microwave; it just made a hell of a but mess. Yeah, you're just and my parents, havoc. my parents your were poor just like, parents. "Clean it up." Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> we're on vacation. I mean, thank God they didn't know, or at least didn't have proof that you were were behind the fridge. Well, I that it wasn't it wasn't something I did to like cause problems. I was just like, "Oh right. well." The, it, but I feel like I want any, the fridge to be colder. But I feel like food. any parent would be a little frustrated. Yeah, like, that their kid is just yeah. continually just that probably havoc. that would have that would have intentionally or not made their day more more difficult because they've been like, <laughs> must not throttle, stupid child. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, that, that's fun because everything that went wrong <laughs> for that trip was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> So I the, don't know what, yeah, what I expected. Yeah, it turns out the common I denominator don't know what I expected was when you. <laughs> when that trip went wrong was me. That's awesome. Oh yeah. man, uh, that was that was good though. It was uh, yeah. it was a lot of fun. I had the best fish and chips I've ever had in my life. Nice was at this place called Zelo's Beach House. Uh huh. And have you ever had fish and chips le- as leftovers? Yes. It, it's it's hard. It's hard. Rough. Yeah, it's, it's rough. Yeah. I had these not even warmed up. Bang. And still they were still bangers. amazing. Wow. Like, it must have been a combination of like incredibly fresh fish yeah. and really good batter and clean Usually fresh. Usually the batter fry, gets like frangle. soggy and just isn't good at all. Like after It still was crispy. Dang. Now, granted, they it cracked been, the code. They yeah, cracked the, the fish I, and chips it code. Was, it was amazing. It was transcendent. That's unreal. And I still remember to this day, like, because I was like, I want to know where these fish and chips came from. What was that <laughs> name of that place we had for dinner? Yeah. Zelo's Beach House. Okay, I'm going to remember that. Oh, man. What what island? Uh, Kauai. Oh, nice. Um, I'll have to check it out if I ever go to Kauai. It, the last time I checked, uh, probably four or five years ago, they were still there. Nice. Nice. Which is impressive considering this trip was like 20 years ago i gotta i gotta see a photo at this, uh, we'll throw a photo up of the fish fish and chips at that place um so you guys can revel if it, marvel at its if it still exists beauty. if it still exists dude I, like uh, man I, I had so much fish and chips when i went to the uk uh, i went there for work <sighs> yeah and i had some and it was terrible it, it wasn't good it wasn't that great it was like that we went to a one fancy place that I just got the fish and chips. I was like, maybe they'll be better here. And it was better, but nothing that you can't get in LA. Nothing that you can't get. It wasn't anything special. Yeah. And I'm like, but this is like the thing that they're, one of the things that they're known for. Like one of their staples. It seems like, like it's, this, it, it seems like the English are, they have, great. they have some foods that are like classic, but they don't, for, for a lot of them, they don't seem to take pride in their food. Right. True. They just go, this is our food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they claim ownership. Yeah. But they don't really take pride in it. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong about that. Mm, it seems more like very like this is sustenance. There's no like yeah. real passion thrown into it. Yeah. At least I didn't. I didn't get that. You didn't, A lot of you the didn't taste like, the passion in your fish and they chips. They have more passion. There was no passion. Passionless. I was, I was like, can I get some salt, pepper, and passion in this in this fish? Did you try putting vinegar on it? Uh, yes, that helps. I can't stand vinegar. Yeah, you, that's right. You you hate it. I love vinegar, so that 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 does help me a lot. Mm. But then it's like you're kind of just cheating at that point. Um, <laughs> Why are you cheating? Because you can't taste anything. Yeah, exactly. Vinegar. It's, just, it's just completely. It's like putting Tabasco on anything. It just becomes Tabasco. The whole dish is Tabasco. And that's why I don't like Tabasco. Too much vinegar. <laughs> Tapatio, but, but, but a small amount on the right dish is fire, as the kids occasionally say. or um, the Tabasco Chipotle version. Yes, that one's pretty good. It is actually. I do love the green Tabasco too. You'd probably hate that one too. It's I, very vinegary. Yeah, yeah. I love it on pizza. I love it on pasta. It's so good. But they, they the UK has more passion in like the beers that they have. Like because oh, you, yeah. you eat at pubs, they're mm-hmm. all pubs, right? Yeah. So it's like they're they, they're like oh have a beer. Like they're they're all drinking like constantly, yeah. constantly. So it's like when you when you're 16 beers deep, you don't really care what the meat pie tastes like. <laughs> you know what I mean? It actually starts to taste all right. You're like all right, I'll have you- fish and chips again. Uh, did you ha- try any uh, sausage rolls when you were there? A sausage roll. Apparently, there's this this place, uh, Greg's. Uh huh. That's quite 
quite uh, popular. Okay. And they make really good sausage rolls, like bre- like a breakfast food kind of thing. Ooh. And oh uh, uh, yeah, it's like an institution at this point. Oh, I don't think I actually had one of those. those it's interesting though. because it seems like the 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 sentiment is not negative. Right. Like you know, once once a chain or whatever gets big enough, yeah, then people just start to kind of dislike it because it's yeah. too big. Yeah, exactly. Um, it loses some of its like comfort like cozy charm like mom and pop small right i yeah. think i think they're at the point where it's like like when dunkin donuts was back when dunkin donuts was mm-hmm. they were good right and they were growing yeah and people people liked them it's like it's like you root for the underdog right yeah. like oh dunkin these are going to be the guys who like take down starbucks and then they kind of become starbucks and you're like yeah you guys suck you guys are the same yeah yeah damn i'll have to check that out yeah i mean that that is very uh that's not the type of shit that they sell at like uh, the Renaissance Fair. You go to Ren-, Ren Fair, it's like pastry with some meat in it. Dude, toad in a hole. Toad in a hole. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Toad I ate like hole. three of those one time. <laughs> I'm a turkey leg man myself. The turkey legs are good, but I hate the the, the huge uh, tendons. Yeah, that's true. That yeah, I'm not a fan of that either. Yeah, I gotta eat my way around those. Toad in the hole is pretty pretty dope. Pretty sl- dude. Remember that one time, Steve? Wait, were you there? When Steve got wrecked on mead, uh, he drank like a gallon of mead and just <laughs> threw up everywhere. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't mind I, sharing this story. I wasn't there for that. <laughs> oh man, it was like I think it was like the New Egg Crew, and uh, we just went to we just went to Renfair. Like, yeah, it'll be a great time. Like Rachel and like Paul, or whatever. And then he tried like Steve tries mead for the very first time. Yeah, which I don't know if you've never had mead. It's just it's. It's gross. It's like a sweet syrupy type of I've, drink. I've had mead from the Renaissance Fair. Yeah, and it was ta- it was nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had it was gross. I've had mead that was homemade. I'm sure that's all right. It was really good. Okay, it was different. This but was, it was really good. This was bad, like bad rent. But I think it's like uh, you know it gets you in the spirit of the whole thing. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm drinking like they used to drink. And so Steve got really into it, and he was just like pounding mead. And at some point, we sat down on the bleachers to watch like the jousting. Yeah, show. And he just vomits all over the like the metal bleed. You just you can hear the splash, like, and everyone's like, "Ah, oh, God!" He didn't hit anybody, did no, he? No, I don't think he got. There might have been there might have been a splash zone, but for the most part, it was just all over this section of the bleachers. Like he just coated it, and we're like, "It's time to go." So we yep. like, we just pick him up, and we're like, just like he's like you know one shoulder on each you know yeah. two shoulders, and uh, we we got him through it, but. uh Dude, that was Renaissance Fair is a lot of fun, man. I almost, it is fun. I came it so close to buying a bespoke Jack Sparrow like, oh, white get, shirt. Yeah, it'll get you on that. I was it was like two hundred dollars. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, ah, I really want this. I really <laughs> want this, but I don't. Yeah. I don't have any reason to have it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's I a made lot of myself stuff. walk away. Hundred percent. Yeah. They they have so many like novel knickknacks and and you get so into the spirit of it while you're there. Like you're like, oh, like that that hat would be cool when there's yeah, there's no other place that you would ever wear it. Maybe yes. to the next Ren Fair. Yes. And it's like I think I think that's like how the Ren Fair gets recruits. Mm, is you go yeah, there and you get right. things that you can only use or wear at Ren Fair. <laughs> yeah, and so they come and then back. you start going more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you eventually you're like, wait, what why don't I just join in? Why <laughs> yeah. don't I become part of the Ren Fair? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I want to learn how to talk like, you know, like like one of them. Um, but all the Ren Fair people are like theater kids. Yeah, they're all theater yeah. kids, and they're loving it. They're, they're <laughs> loving it so hard. I couldn't do it, dude. I couldn't do it. I was kind of a theater kid, but I wasn't like a theater kid. You weren't, you know, you weren't uh, at that level of method acting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where like everything has to be ironic. You yeah, know, just like just so crazy. Oh man. Uh, okay, I remembered another another uh, messy trip. Okay. Uh, so I uh, my friends I got uh, Aaron and yeah, uh, Chris and Spencer and some yeah other folks all were like hey we're gonna go camping, and I had gone camping, uh, I think with Aaron and Chris before. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't remember, but I I. Th- Oh, and Mike. Uh, so yeah. we made our plans. We all got there, and we we I learned several important lessons. Mm-hmm. 
one was uh, so so first of all we start to put up our campsite um we brought no less than four camping chairs that were completely broken yeah so you know you take <laughs> you take the camping chair and you go to put it up and it's just broken for you guys didn't know it was broken until you got yeah. there okay it was just like oh there's camping chairs in my garage grab some of those <laughs> they're all <laughs> broken <laughs> And then, uh, fortunately we had brought more than that, but, but like out of six or seven, we brought like four were just broken. (laughs) Like not even usable at all. Yeah. Just wouldn't stand. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. And then, uh, at least one tent was like missing stuff. Like couldn't put it up. Yeah. Um, what a nightmare. I want to say there might've been a missing sleeping bag, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, the buddy up. And so the lesson there was check your gear. Yeah. Definitely. Check your gear before you go camping. Yeah. That's a good tip. That's a really good piece of advice. Um the second part was it was hot. Uh-huh. It was really hot. No nobody nobody looked at the weather and realized it was gonna be like nineties. Yeah. Um so we had we had like one case of like 24 regular size water bottles oh, for geez. the whole like the whole weekend. weekend for all of you. Yeah. That's yeah. Not enough. It was not nearly That's enough. Crazy. So we had to go and get like the big two gallon jugs like multiple times. Cause it was really hot. Yeah. yeah. Um, you just pounding water the whole time. And third, uh, was a lesson for me, which was, uh, if you think it's not safe, don't do it. And this was <laughs> not a lesson that I learned the hard way. Okay. Fortunately. Uh, but I, we were. Is a microwave involved? No. Although I do have some more microwave stories. <laughs> not surprised. Um, so I had gotten recently into knots and. Oh, like, okay. Like. Tying knots? Yeah. And I had gotten some paracord, which is. Yeah. Pretty, pretty thin, but very high strength cordage. Yeah. And so there's this spot we were playing around, uh, messing around in this, this area with the river and like a little stream. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to make a zip line. <laughs> oh God. Oh, so I, no. I made, I made, uh, the zip line across the stream and I really wanted to try it, but somehow some part of me that, that the better half of you, the, the better 16th of me <laughs> just kept saying, nope, nope, nope. I <laughs> too far. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Just a single, it was just a single cord. Yeah. Oh, no way. And it's, it's high, it's pretty high strength, but I, I didn't know enough about knots and I didn't know enough about how, uh, how the weight that a, anything can support because, when you when you say oh a rope has a five hundred pound breaking strength that means basically if it's Straight. suspending a, a load vertically right right yeah and not you, horizontally and you exceed yeah because horizontally exponentially it, it, it Goes increases down. the ex, the stresses that are on the, right, the line for sure um, so somehow I managed to subconsciously realize it was a bad idea <laughs> so I sent I I sent a put a paper clip and put around, uh, put it over a bag of chips and sent that across to, some, <laughs> there you to go. somebody and yeah, I that, sent them that, some chips. That's, that's about the level you were operating at. Yeah. That's so good. I managed to not break myself. There. That's good. That is good. You realize that. Um, and then I, I get, I don't Should've know. had Aaron Kenny Piggott or something. Should yeah. I, or like Chris, cause he's small. I, like, hey, no, nah, it was, it was going to be me or nobody. And I was like, <laughs> no, it's not going to be me. Fair. Um, and I don't know what the, the lesson is here. Well, it was, it was, the lesson is if you can't sleep, don't try and drink yourself to sleep. Mm, yeah. Cause it was hot. Yeah. And I can't, I, I have a hard time sleeping. If it's, if it's above 75 degrees, that oh, counts God. as, that counts as too hot. Even over 70. I'm just like, eh. And it was well. It was it was over eighty. There's like nothing worse. There's nothing worse trying to sleep in the, 
in the heat. Yes. It's terrible. Even though it was a dry heat relatively. Sure. It was it was brutal. And I and I was like I was I the first night I had the hardest time sleeping. And then the second night oh, I was like it's torture. I'm gonna drink a bunch of whiskey. That'll knock me out. Oh, and then I'll no. sleep. It just raises your body temperature even more. Yeah. And then I was laying there all night just like uh, uh. <laughs> Yeah, right. And and, yeah. and and so I I and then I tried it again the next night and uh, it still didn't work. Dang it! Maybe and, I didn't drink enough. <laughs> and I, at that point, I had almost no sleep for like three days. That's terrible. Yeah, and then I was like, "All right, Chris, you're gonna have to drive because I I'm too tired. I'm too sleepy <laughs> to drive, man. Sleepy, dehydrated, and hungover. It was oh yeah, it was it was brutal. So I don't know what the lesson is other than like maybe." bring your own personal air conditioner and <laughs> when it's hot like yeah that. at least maybe know. bring a fan like a portable fan yeah that could help that would have helped a lot i uh i brought a portable fan with me to when we went to greece for yacht week or whatever yeah and thank god i did but it still wasn't really enough i'm like it was better than not having it but it was so humid and hot especially the last night that we slept on the yacht we didn't have ac on the yacht yeah. it didn't have ac that was like an extra grand or something they were like nah We'll be fine. It would have been worth it. It was so freakishly hot. It was I, only I it was only a grand to get air conditioning for everybody. I don't remember exactly, but okay. it was like enough to we were, we were like, eh, it's too much. But um, it was uh, I didn't sleep a single minute. You know, I was just tossing and turning the whole night, miserable, sweating. I had the fan on me, but it just it was just, just blowing more hot air, just laying in a puddle of sweat, and it was humid, and it was oh. very humid. It felt like I was sleeping in the jungle in Thailand. It was oh. crazy. And yeah. I was like, I don't think I'll ever, I'll never do this again. This is insane. Yeah. Um, so the lesson there is don't go to hot human places. And unless if you're going to be sleeping outdoors, then just be prepared for misery. Yeah. That's really it. That's, that's all you can do. But there's, you want to, you want to talk about misery and camping? We got a good story from, uh, yeah. from Deeth, our friend Ryan from, uh, from the discord. He said, uh, first time I lived in Colorado and was dating this girl, we went on a backpacking trip in the Purdue Can- Canyon. Uh, Pudre, Pudre Canyon. One of her friends came along with us and brought her dog. Was her first time bringing her dog on a hike like this. I looked at the forecast and saw there was a chance of rain and thunderstorms, which in Colorado means it's probably going to rain a shitload. I had a nice tent with substantial waterproofing, so I was prepared. So first night we go about 10 miles and make camp. I set up everything with the expectation we might have rain, wind, noticed that the girlfriend's friend has a pretty shitty tent, so I made sure we had some space just in case they had to sleep with us. Sure enough, it fucking pours and destroys her tent, which doesn't have a rain fly. So she has to sleep with her dog in our tent. Her dog, not doing so good, is stressed out from the rain, thunder, and isn't doing so hot. At oh, about no. 2 a.m., oh, no. it happens. I hear what sounds like the most bubbly blowout of <laughs> shit, and the smell hits me. That's dog shit. Her dog dumped the most awful shit I've ever smelled in the tent, and it ain't solid. So there we are. Three adults and a dog in a tent, 10 miles from our cars with a watery dog shit and a thunderstorm outside. As you can probably imagine, that was it for the trip. I did my best to try and get the shit out of my tent, then packed everything up and carried my pack and her sick dog 10 miles back in pouring rain. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one, dude. <laughs> at, th- at that point, you got to put her down. Not the dog, the, the girl the girlfriend's friend. <laughs> you put her down, dude. No way. Sorry, you failed to prepare. You're on your own. Oh man. That's so good. That is that is <laughs> brutal. Like and man, I saw that coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The dog, dude. Oh. Uh, okay, geez, so can you imagine. Put a diaper on your dog. <laughs> the lessons that we're taking away from this episode are biblical. Put a diaper on your dog. Or just don't invite a, someone else's dog into your tent. Yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty brutal. I hope they got they got they got the rest of that uh, gunk out of their tent. Oh man, because that's that's the crazy thing is like imagine you you try to you you have to pack up a tent like everything folds up. Yeah, it's all crumpled up. Right. So now right whatever dog poop residue is in <laughs> yeah, there it's just is now just in. Every, on every surface. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a ball of foil. You yeah. know, once you unravel it, whatever oil was in there is just mm-hmm. all over the whole thing. Now that's so true. Dude, weird things happen in tents. It's true. I remember uh, it was a Coachella one year at Coachella. I went with uh, I think it was actually the year that like Steve and Carrie and 
uh, like Aaron was there, I think. Um, we were actually me and my ex at the time, or yeah, my ex. We were sleeping in the tent with Stephen Carey, actually. Yeah. And we're all you know blacked out. We'd gotten trash the night before, or whatever. And my ex wakes me up. She's like, Kyle, Kyle. I'm like waking up. It's like three a.m. Whatever. And she's like, There's someone next to me. I'm like, What? She's like, There's someone in our tent. I'm like, Yeah, it's Stephen Carey. And she's like, No, no, no. There's a there's a random guy next to laying next to so, me. Somebody just stumbled in and start, fell asleep. At least five or six times, I like looked at the guy and I was like, That's Steve. And she's like, it's not Steve. And I finally look at him. I'm like, really try to wake up now because now she's freaking out. I'm like, oh, that's not Steve. <laughs> and uh, and I'm like, okay. I'm like fully alert now. And she's like, tell him to, tell him to get out. And I was like, okay. Um, and I'm like waking the guy. He's just totally knocked out. I finally shake him. I'm like, hey, buddy, dude. He's like, Ugh. I'm like, you're in the wrong tent. He's like, what? <laughs> like what, what other response would yeah, you get? exactly i was expecting much I'm like you got, i was like dude i'm sorry you, you gotta get out dude you're in the wrong tent just, uh, didn't even say it just like walks out and uh and then the next morning we're all like cooking breakfast mike's you know cooking bacon and eggs oh yeah and the guy comes back and he's like i think i left my phone here i'm so sorry about last night <laughs> like he was very like apologetic we all just gave him so much shit we're like ah it's the guy that <laughs> crashed in our tent we just fucking trolled him so hard. It was all in good fun, but um, it was very funny. It was very, very funny. <laughs> the tent guy. Uh, uh, I imagine that that's there's probably like a one of one in five chance of that happening to every tent at yes, Coachella. Definitely, yeah. Because that could have been you me. Get, you get wasted enough, you're just gonna be like, yeah, that looks like it. Yeah, that was just me on a different timeline. Like, <laughs> <laughs> literally. Dude, I, saw, I watched that. We watched, I watched Grizzly Man. Oh, yeah. Have you seen that? No. Oh, my gosh, dude. You know what it's about? I do. Oh, my gosh. I mean, the guy's uh, just insane. Like, the guy is actually... He, he believes he is Brother Bear. He's got some disorder, some schizophrenic, whatever it is. He's not all... He's not well. Well, he's not anything anymore. He was eaten by a bear, but... Well, he's, he's bear shit. He's bear shit, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's such. I mean, just the footage because he's got he, he captured like a hundred hours of, of footage with him and the bears. Yeah, just hanging just out, right? Face to face with grizzlies. Yeah, just in the wild, nothing in between him, no gun, no spray, no anything. He's just and like a couple times they like kind of come at him and he's like, mm-hmm. no, now it's okay. Like as if like he's getting through to them somehow. And somehow he survives. Somehow he survived up, like up 13, until that point. 13 summers. I think he spent thirteen summers with them, and then. Boom. They finally, finally, one of them was just like, this guy's annoying. We should just eat him. They put up with him for a long time, a though. real long time. I'm shocked that he lasted that long. But and some of the some of the interviews are so brutal because they, they recorded it. This was like, you know, years ago. It was the documentary shot maybe a year after it happened. It was like the guys that are just working at the, the park that he was at or whatever. And they're just like, yeah, he had it coming. <laughs> like, he's like, kind of a dumbass. Nobody was surprised. No one his... was surprised. Yeah, even his friend was like, I, don't know, I wasn't surprised when I heard the news. <laughs> Everyone's just like, dude was fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> like, not one. Per- there was there was his ex that was just as loopy as he was. That was just like, he was just trying to save the bears and protect the bears. But just insane that the, he did what he did. I feel like that's that's... I don't know. It, it, I wonder if it was a... That's a trip gone wrong for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a bad trip. <laughs> I wonder if it was uh, him Him just thinking that he could, you know, be on their level, like communicate with them somehow and, yeah. you know, be safe that way. Or if he was just so... If he was just so obsessed that he was just like, I'm, I'm bare kin. You yeah, know, right. Like I identify as as I'm, I feel like I'm a bear inside or well, something. Well, it, it's and, an interesting documentary because it kind of goes back into like his psyche, like it's his childhood and stuff, mm-hmm. and and also like his what he was doing before he was trying to be on TV. Like he had an audition for like a part in Cheers, like the bartender in Cheers, and he didn't get that. And like his family was like, after he didn't get that role, he kind of just spiraled out of control and went downhill. Really? Um, he was all know, because of Cheers. Well, I think there was a, that was the, the the straw that broke the camel's yeah. back. He was trying to be an actor, trying to be somebody, you know, 
And I think based on the document from what I saw, it was almost like he found this because he already had this like interest in nature and bears and stuff. He was always kind of obsessed. He had like a teddy bear that he slept with. Even while he was recording this footage, he would have a teddy bear in his tent that he would sleep with and shit. It was really weird. So kind of weird. an obsession, but he, he, I think he escaped into this obsession as uh, uh, basically it was an attempt to be like a reality TV star, like the next crocodile hunter type thing. Like okay. He's the bear whisperer. So I think he was he was recording all this stuff, getting all this footage so that he could eventually pitch it to a network and be famous, more or less. And because he couldn't handle the failure in reality, in yeah. base reality, he yeah, had yeah. to escape into this fantasy land where he was he was he was the guy. He was the bear guy. You know. Um once you see all the footage, you know, and, and you learn more about his life, you're just like, dude, this guy was just trying his hardest to to be crocodile dundee. Like he was trying to be a reality TV star, more or less, and, and really and was and was delusional enough to think that he could talk to bears, that he had this ability. Um, I didn't re- I didn't realize it was the uh, the media angle that that drove it. I thought he was just obsessed with bears. He but he was it was that too. He, okay, he, he genuinely was a bear freak, but he he also <laughs> was I think very insecure and kind of maybe a bit of a narcissist. Okay. To think that, I mean, you kind of have to be a narcissist to think that you're, just, you're a bear whisperer, that you can just like talk to grizzlies head on. That's insane. Yes. That's crazy. So <laughs> he, it was just a, the mashing of these two things, um, his weird, you know, his idiosyncrasies that, uh, you know, I guess made him somewhat famous to okay. a degree. Well, speaking, speaking of bears and people and idiosyncrasies, uh, have you heard of Troy? I want to say his the last name is Hurt Hurtabees. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Uh, he made he he was obsessed with making a bear proof suit. Oh no, that sounds fun though. It was like the dude was so <laughs> dedicated. That? Yeah, he um, he was he was like this this sort of like semi genius garage inventor kind of guy oh god um and he made all kinds of all kinds of wacky stuff but his main project was i think i think originally he was trying to make something and uh pitch it to darpa like or the army uh for for like super combat armor okay and i don't i don't remember if that's the case or not but i get the impression that that was part of it but then he eventually just got obsessed with making the suit a suit for grizzly man like That's basically crazy he was trying to make a, a suit of armor yeah that would protect you from a grizzly bear was he also obsessed with bears or he was just trying to make some he was just trying to make like a spartan armor suit. yeah right and 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 a grizzly bear is a good benchmark yes for how a terrible, grizzly bear is a pretty how damn good armor benchmark. Is. it is that i'll give him that and this dude went through multiple generations of development and prototyping. What did it even he, look like? Was it just steel? It was. Or? There were there was different varieties. I think I think one of some of them were metal based. Some of them might have been composite based. Right. But um, he did he did things like, you know those uh, those those traps in the uh, the Empire Strikes Back where the traps. The uh, the little uh, oh no my nerd cred uh, the Ewoks the Ewoks take two logs and they just drop them so they slam together oh on, yeah, yeah yeah right on a uh, Imperial Walker yeah sure um, he had like I don't know if it was a log just slamming into him or just a log rolling onto him yeah but or or you'd have somebody like just crash their truck into him yeah. <laughs> like 15 miles an hour. He's like got this all on video. Yeah. That's awesome. And just some crazy inventor. He even tried messing with fire. Like can it, re- how can it resist fire? <laughs> he had a system of, uh, like airbags, uh-huh. uh, like as insulation basically between his body and, oh, right. and the exterior sure. of the suit. Yeah. As, shock absorber like packing right? peanuts in between him, him and the suit <laughs> some some type of yeah air, air cushion air cushion things yeah and the heat started making those like 
melt and pop. Oh, so God. then his skin was touching the hot metal of the ah, suit. Ah, jeez. So the the it fa- failed the fire test. <laughs> yeah. Dang, um, dude, that's wild. That's pretty cool, dude. I mean, I, you've seen like the what they keep like bear proof like trash cans, like bear proof trash. Those things are like just steel boxes. Yeah. That also have like a hard to do like handle that you have to get in there. You know. You know like, the. You have to be in one of those. You have to be in a tank, basically, for it to... <laughs> the funny thing about bear-proof uh, uh, trash cans... Yeah. Is they're actually really hard to make. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because the the overlap between the smartest bear and the, and dumbest, the dumbest human... And the dumbest human is pretty, pretty... So you have to make it... Be, <laughs> yeah. You have to make it so that a bear can't open it, but a human can. It took me a little longer than I'd like to admit to figure out how to open the one in Yosemite. <laughs> the one that was right out front of the cabin. I was like... And there's like a little diagram on it too. I figured it, it was dark, so I was like, oh, is it? "Ah, okay, okay." Yeah, I slip I've, your hand I've struggled with it myself. I was like, "Got it, got it now." All right, I'm smarter than a bear. <laughs> Just because barely. the bear can't Just, read instructions. Yeah, that's the only reason. <laughs> Without the instructions, I'd be done. Yeah, all that trash would pile up on the porch. Oh man, that's so dude. Funny. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen what happens if you leave food in your car, or like, will a bear just like break in? Yeah, and they will t- they will tear it apart. They will your, try- your car, it's, right? Yes, your car is just destroyed. especially especially if somehow they get in there and then because they'll they'll open the door. They'll yeah, just open the door. Yeah, yeah. And then if they get in there and they're wobbling around, the door shuts. Yeah, and then they're trapped in your car. Oh my god! And they just rip their way out. Yeah, oh it's my- bad. I it's mean, their really claws bad. like you just see them just like tear apart like flesh of like yeah. another animal, like, you know, in videos, just like, Oh my, like just the amount of force, raw force and power that they have in their claws and their jaw. Yes. The, the, just their mass. Have you ever seen this? They're just beasts. There's dude. a couple of good videos out there of grizzlies fighting. Dude, there, there was a actually psycho bear, grizzly man got a really crazy bear fight in, on one of his tapes and they showed the whole fight basically. And Mel and I were just like, watch, there's no audio or there's audio of the bears, but no dialogue and just yeah. watching this fight for like and, five minutes. And, and there's fur just flying everywhere, fur flying everywhere. And I mean, just the blows that they're just exchanging are, you can't even imagine yeah. what that would do to a human. It would just pulp you. Yeah. Instantly. And they're just taking it over and over and over and over and over. You shoot that thing with 20 arrows. It's still going to kill you. <laughs> it's just charge you. It's got this arrow sticking out of its head. It's just kind of freaking. There's they're so strong. They're so they're tanks. Yeah, they're total tanks. Yeah. Vicious tanks. If I if I had to go up against the bear, my weapon of choice would be a, uh, a minigun. I was gonna say a Gatlin <laughs> dude. <laughs> <Go with> the <laughs> Gatlin. <laughs> That's the only thing. Maybe a grenade. <laughs> yeah. Oh, grenade launcher. Yeah, dude. Bears are wild. Literally. They are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy, though, is bears actually have a really Im- important impact on the ecosystem. I'm sure. Um, when, because, you know, bears, they, they're all about that salmon, right? Yeah. Well, it turns out uh, when bears go out and they eat salmon, a lot of times they'll take the salmon and eat the skin yeah like it's all fatty yeah and they won't eat so much of the flesh Mm -hmm. and then they'll just toss it and the volume at which that happens there's so many just like dead salmon decomposing around the rivers the nutrients especially the nitrogen that comes out of that salmon is really important for nurturing the 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 vegetation like the trees mm, and right, stuff like the soil and all that yeah yeah so makes sense so when either bears or salmon are removed from the equation all of a sudden the 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 forests around the rivers start to degrade they're right. not getting because they they don't they're not getting fertilized anymore yeah right why do they only eat the skin it's uh, just cause because they get less hungry that's the yummy part bro dang damn <laughs> dude apparently it was because uh for grizzly man he got eaten because there was like a drought or it was like, I think uh, hibernation time. Mm-hmm. So there were some bears that were still, that had yet to hibernate that were like, all right, this is, this is like, you're cramming for a final. You got to eat as much as you can Cram- before you, yeah, before you cramming sleep. and stuff, food in their face. Yeah. So he, he and his girlfriend, 
uh, who also got eaten the same time, uh, they were like, look, we're going to stay an extra week. They, they, they were going to leave and just like go back to normal city life, but they wanted to stay an extra week to get more footage or whatever. And, uh, and it was right around hibernation time where there was one angry bear that like the people who knew him knew of this bear, like, Oh, they never got along. And the bear was, you know, it was his last meal basically before he went into hibernation. So he was like, it's gotta be a big one. <laughs> you know, what's what's wild about hibernating bears is they will eat like right before, right before they go to hibernate, they'll eat something very, uh, fibrous. And I'm sure that guy had a lot of fiber. Uh, meat doesn't have fiber. Oh, damn. There's got to be something in us that's Ve- got fiber. Vegetable huh? matter has fiber. Vegetable matter. Uh, so he was eat, maybe he was vegetarian. They'll eat uh, something high in high in fiber, and then when they're hibernating, it ends up forming like a plug in their in their butt, mm. so that so it poop. just holds in the poop. Whoa! <laughs> Dang. Yeah. So Reverse basically, they 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 have they have a cork in their butt. <laughs> So that they're not pooping all over the cave they're hibernating in. Dang. That dog could have used one camping. <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the first things they do when they get out of hibernation is they go drink some drink some water to, to kind of like dissolve the cork. You know, loosen things up and right. then and take and care take of business. A, take a pretty epic dump, I would imagine. <laughs> that dude's head just comes out of the bear's butt. <laughs> that is insane, dude. Okay, what's scarier, bears or piranhas? If you had, oh, God. if you had to cross a field that had a couple of Ugh. grizzly bears in it, or if you had to cross a river that had piranhas in it. Oh my gosh! Because the thing about piranhas is they're quick. Yeah, and and um, I don't think they need to. I don't think there needs to be any blood for them to, to be attracted. Yeah. I mean, what if you just ran full sprint across a, a stream? Uh, or do you have to swim? You have to swim. Oh, dude. Okay, you can it's a it's oh, a God. it's hip hip height. Oh. Which means your junk is your junk. I was gonna say junk is compromised. <laughs> I was like, where's the line, dude? Tell me where the line's at. Um I oh God. I would have to go with uh I'd have to go with the piranhas. Yeah. Because my vital organs are kind of waste waste up. Okay. You know what I mean? Even if they take my legs off, I could still survive. A bear, there's no chance. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Zero chance. I can't outrun it. I can't outclimb it. But the but the piranhas could strip your your legs of Muscle. Flesh and muscle, and yeah. then your legs won't work anymore, and then you won't. Well, you won't be able to make it across the stream. Oh damn! Would it be that quick? They're pretty damn. They fast. They are pretty freaking fast. How big of a stream are we talking here? <laughs> big enough where that's a possibility. I guess. I guess. I guess <sighs> it's. I still think it's a toss up. They both suck. I, they both suck, but I think there's absolutely zero chance I'd survive a bear. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, but what if you just played dead? How could you? I don't know if I could. Even if my life depended on it. Yeah. How could you? Your your heart, my heart would be beating out of my chest. I'd be breathing so hard. Mm, yeah, but, but you just have to like lay there and not move. And I wonder if it could tell, like if a bear could tell if you were, like if your chest was going up and down, like, oh, he's still alive. Like, you know, or you feel I don't like know. literally, a I wonder bear, how good I, they are I, gauging I think, that. I think, a lot of a lot of bears, and and I don't know for sure, but it seems like bear attacks are more typically based about territory or perceived threat. Yeah, than they are about you know I'm hungry, I need to eat. Sure. Yeah. Obviously, there's exceptions. Yeah. But I think that's the reason why you're supposed you're the the common thing is you're supposed to play dead. Right. Is you don't want to present anything that looks like a threat to them. Yeah, definitely. Um, but if they're just hungry, then yeah, <laughs> doesn't matter if you're dead or not. I mean, maybe it'll be over quicker if you, <laughs> if you're just laying there. Oh, I dude, don't know. That's the crazy thing. It's like in in Grizzly Man, like the there's the audio recording. You heard that? There's an the audio mm-hmm. recording that's never been publicly released, but it's like four minutes long. It's like five minutes long, 
and it's just him moaning, the guy moaning and getting, screaming, just getting, getting eaten. Yeah. It's not a quick death. No. He's just being eaten alive piece by piece. No. That's insane. That's I can't. I, it's crazy that the girl got eaten too. Like, I would have been like just running at that point. Did she just hauling ass? She well, stuck around and tried to hit the bear. She oh. had a frying pan, was hitting the bear on the head, apparently. Well, and uh, score one for love. Definitely. But, but score one for the bear. Yeah. Score two for the bear. <laughs> yeah. Bear definitely won that one. Definitely. Did you see but... any when you were in uh, Yosemite? No, no. And after that documentary, I was kind of glad. <laughs> I was pretty. I was. I was not upset to not see a bear. We had. We had been through enough. That yes. Trip. Um, but I think we're gonna call it here. We're about an hour, ish. Oh yeah, we're good. Oh wow, we Gucci. That was quick as hell. Yeah. Damn. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, sharing your stories on Discord. We we love to see it. We'll uh, we'll probably have another question for you this week, and uh, and we'll read some of your answers for the next episode. Thank you guys so much. Make sure to toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and rate us rate us on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you guys very much. See you next week. Adios amigos. Uh,